we know that this feature exists and what it does. However, we don't know the exact algorithm for this scaling. Okay, back to the BIOS. For many years, motherboard vendors have tried to implement automatic overclocking features to allow for simpler performance enhancement. Very often, it's kind of a mixed bag of results because either the implementation would be too ambitious on the frequency side or too generous on the voltage side. So you'd end up with either an unstable system or an overheating system. ASUS AI overclocking uses a different strategy. Instead of working with preset profiles, the system will monitor the CPU and cooling system throughout an initial phase of testing. Then, based on its findings, predict the optimal settings. The system will then automatically guide the overclocking process and adjust voltages and frequency to match your cooling system. The better your cooling, the higher your AI overclock. There are three steps to enabling AI overclocking. First, reset the BIOS to default settings. Then, reboot and enter the operating system. Run a couple of heavy workloads such as Prime95, Realbench or Intel XTU for 10 to 30 minutes. Then return to the BIOS and enter the AI OC guide menu from the top. Make sure to read through the explanation and when ready, simply click enable AI. Okay, back to the BIOS. I briefly covered this feature in our Rocket Lake overclocking launch video. In essence, this feature allows you to configure a maximum temperature for the CPU. The ASUS motherboard will track the CPU temperature during operation and once the actual temperature exceeds your target temperature, the CPU frequency will be reduced. It doesn't do this by directly adjusting the CPU ratio, but rather by adjusting the Turbo Boost power limit parameters. By lowering the power limits, the Intel CPU then will adjust the CPU ratio down on its own. By default, ASUS has enabled this setting on the Z590 motherboards, as they also enabled multi-core enhancement. The default setting for the Maximus 13 series motherboards is 90 degrees centigrade. For the purpose of this guide, we set the package temperature threshold to 85 degrees centigrade for all of our overclocks. Okay, back to the BIOS. QFAN has been around on ASUS motherboards since the early 2000s. Obviously, the implementation on current motherboards is much more advanced than on the boards from the early 2000s. However, the main function and purpose is still relatively the same. Namely, regulate the system fans according to how taxed the system is. I think this is a section of the BIOS which is used by many enthusiasts to manually set up the fan behavior. For this guide, we'll only use one specific feature. We configure the chassis fan 2 to follow the T sensor. We connect a temperature sensor to the header near the bottom of the motherboard and put the sensor in our water loop. We do this to address a specific issue with the tech cooling in unregulated mode. By default, the system fans are mapped against the CPU temperature. When we set the cryo cooling to unregulated mode, the CPU temperature will be very low in idle. Therefore, the radiator fans will not spin up and the radiator will not be actively cooled. However, in unregulated mode, the tech is working at full power and must be actively cooled. In our case, the Delta tech adds about 200 watts of load in the water loop. So this creates a problem. On the one hand, we're adding heat in the loop because of unregulated mode. And on the other hand, the fans are not spinning up also because of unregulated mode this can potentially get out of hand. With our configuration, we make sure that the water temperature is monitored during unregulated mode and action is taken if the water temperature increases too much. Okay, now let's move on to our first overclocking strategy. However, before we get started, make sure to locate the save boot button on your motherboard. In case your system fails to boot up after you've configured your settings, Pressing this button will force the system to boot at default settings while retaining your BIOS configuration. So you can return to the BIOS easily and make the necessary adjustment. In our first overclocking strategy, we simply unlock the extra performance that is provided by enabling Intel ABT, 
enabling ASUS MCE and enabling Intel XMP. There are three main differences between the default configuration and this overclocking strategy. First, Intel ABT allows the CPU to boost to 5.1 GHz when all cores are active, whereas the default configuration only allows 5.1 GHz for up to 4 active cores and up to 4.8 GHz with 8 active cores. Second, Intel XMP increases the memory frequency to DDR4-4266 up from the stock speed of DDR4-2133. Do note that this will also enable Gear 2 mode. Third, ASUS MCE unlocks the Turbo Boost parameters, allowing for essentially unlimited time at the highest performance levels. Upon entering the BIOS, go to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to XMP1. Set Intel Adaptive Boost Technology to Enabled. Set ASUS Multicore Enhancement to Enabled, Remove All Limits. Enter the AI Features submenu. Set Package Temperature Threshold to 85. Set Regulate Temperature Threshold to Enabled. Go to the Monitor menu. Enter the QFAN Configuration submenu. Enter the Chassis Fan Configuration submenu. Set Chassis Fan Profile to Manual. Set Chassis Fan QFAN Source to T-Sensor. Set Chassis Fan Lower Temperature to 30. Set Chassis Fan Middle Temperature to 35. Set Chassis Fan Upper Temperature to 40. Set Chassis Middle Duty Cycle to 60. Then save and exit the BIOS. We reran the benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to the default operation. As expected, compared to the default settings, we see the largest performance gains in multi-threaded and 3D benchmark workloads. This is to be expected since the default configuration limits the time our CPU can be in full turbo boost, whereas enabling MCE lifts that restriction. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX enabled, the CPU operates stably at 4262 MHz with 1.132 volts. The average CPU temperature is 85 degrees centigrade and the average water temperature is 37 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 188.2 watts. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX disabled, the CPU operates stably at 4736 megahertz with 1.204 volts. The average CPU temperature is 85 degrees centigrade and the average water temperature is 37 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 202.2 watts. Now let's do some actual overclocking. In our second overclocking strategy, we no longer use Intel ABT to determine the CPU ratio, but instead we let the ASUS AI do the overclocking for us. We also use one of ASUS's uh, OCTVB profiles to increase the CPU ratio if the temperature is low enough, thus benefiting from our Quantum X Delta Tech cryo cooler. The main difference between strategy two and strategy one is the increase of maximum CPU frequency across the board. The one active core can now boost up to 5.4 GHz, and when eight cores are active, they'll boost to 5.2 GHz. Upon entering the BIOS, go to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to XMP1. Set Intel Adaptive Boost Technology to Disabled. Set ASUS Multicore Enhancement to Enabled Remove All Limits. Set CPU Core Ratio to AI Optimized. Enter the Thermal Velocity Boost submenu. Set Overclocking TVB to Plus One Boost Profile. Leave the Thermal Velocity Boost submenu. Enter the AI Features submenu. Set Package Temperature Threshold to 85. Set Regulate Temperature Threshold to Enabled. Go to the Monitor menu. Enter the QFAN Configuration submenu. Enter the Chassis Fan Configuration submenu. Set Chassis Fan Profile to Manual. Set Chassis Fan QFAN Source to T-Sensor. Set Chassis Fan Lower Temperature to 30. Set Chassis Fan Middle Temperature to 35. Set Chassis Fan Upper Temperature to 40. Set chassis middle duty cycle to 60, then save and exit the BIOS. We reran the benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to stock operation. As expected, 
we see performance gains across the board as both single core and all core maximum frequencies have increased over the default configuration. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX enabled, the CPU operates stably at 4376 MHz with 1.118 volts. The average CPU temperature is 85 degrees centigrade and the average water temperature is 37 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 186.6 watts. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX disabled, the CPU operates stably at 4,778 MHz with 1.197 volts. The average CPU temperature is 85 degrees centigrade and the average water temperature is 37 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 199.6 watts. Our third strategy isn't that much different from our second strategy. We still rely on ACES AI to determine our CPU ratios. It's just that we go a little bit more aggressive on the OCTVB and go for the plus two boost profile. As you'll see in a minute during the BIOS configuration, the plus two boost profile will push two cores to 5.5 gigahertz. Since not all of our cores are capable of 5.5 gigahertz, we need to use the special Rocket Lake feature per core ratio limit to ensure 5.5 GHz is only set for the cores that are capable of it. I used a cool application called Core Cycler by Spoon82 to test the overclocking capabilities of each core. Then I used that information to limit the maximum ratio for each core in the BIOS. In addition to increasing the CPU ratio, we also increased the voltage for the highest CPU ratio using VF point offset from 1.493 volts to 1.543 volts. Upon entering the BIOS, go to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to XMP1. Set Intel Adaptive Boost Technology to Disabled. Set ACES Multicore Enhancement to Enabled Remove All Limits. Set CPU Core Ratio to AI Optimized. Enter the specific core submenu. Set Core 0 to Core 1 Specific Ratio Limit to 55, 53, 54, 54, 55, 54, 54, 54. Leave the specific core submenu. Enter the thermal velocity boost submenu. Set overclocking TVB to plus two boost profile. Leave the thermal velocity boost submenu. Enter the VF point offset submenu. Set VF point eight offset to 0 0.050. Leave the VF point offset submenu. Enter the AI features submenu. Set package temperature threshold to 85. Set regulate temperature threshold to enabled. Go to the monitor menu. Enter the QFAN configuration submenu. Enter the chassis fan configuration submenu. Set chassis fan profile to manual. Set chassis fan QFAN source to T sensor. Set chassis fan lower temperature to 30. Set chassis fan middle temperature to 35. Set chassis fan upper temperature to 40. Set chassis middle duty cycle to 60. Then save and exit the BIOS. We re-ran the benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to stock operation. As you can see, the performance further improves. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX enabled, the CPU operates stably at 4370 MHz with 1.121 volts. The average CPU temperature is 85 degrees centigrade and the average water temperature is 37 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 187.3 watts. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX disabled, the CPU operates stably at 4781 megahertz with 1.195 volts. The average CPU temperature is 85 degrees centigrade and the average water temperature is 37 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 200.2 watts. Now let's do some manual overclocking. In our fourth and penultimate overclocking strategy, we take matters in our own hands.